Hawk Newsom is a founding member of Black Lives Matter, Greater New York. And today is Tuesday, March 30th, 2021. Um, the organization is one of the most disruptive groups in the country and are continuously fighting against anti-blackness, according to their website and information. Not only has Hawk Newsom helped victims of police brutality, he works with members of the LGBT community victims of human trafficking, the mental health community, and he founded the Black Lives Caucus. Hawk, thank you for joining us, you know, to talk about this issue. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. But before we start, tell us a little bit about Black Lives Matter in your words, because, you know, people hear it in the media, different sides and different perspectives in politics. What, what's the essence of Black Lives Matter? I think to take it uh, from the top, and to clear up the misconceptions, anytime a group of individuals in America seek to change, uh, seek to change the status quo, choose to combat racism, America vilifies them. In the media, America vilifies them. Uh, uh, on Main Street, the everyday people, everyday Americans have a problem with black people gaining rights. And that's extremely problematic for me. You look at people in the past, regardless of their methodology, you look at Dr. King, you look at, at, at Malcolm X, no matter who they were, what their philosophies were, America had a problem with them because America likes keeping black people as second class citizens. So what we do at Black Lives Matter Greater New York is we fight for the liberation of black people that 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 looks like combating systemic racism what is systemic racism black people are turned down for banking loans uh black people go to uh, uh subpar schools black people are killed and brutalized and incarcerated by the government these are not things that we're making up this is not an emotional argument these are facts that anyone can research is so this um, we're yeah, I mean, we're here for the liberation of Black people. Is this an issue that only applies to African Americans, Black people here in the United States? Well, what's, what, what you have to understand is when Black people won the right to sit at the front of the bus, I don't know how much your viewers know about Jim Crow, but Jim Crow laws kept Black people in a second-class status. They had to use separate bathrooms, separate re restaurants, separate hotels. When we fought that battle to end Jim Crow, which meant we could we could uh, eat in any restaurant we want to, we could go pretty much where we wanted to, same bathroom, same water fountains, you name it. Everyone run, won that right, from Asians to Latinx to people who have migrated to the United States that are not white, that are people of color. Um, this is the way it is here. We suffered from racism, but also across the world. I mean, racism was a worldwide practice. Uh, 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 the demonization and the vilification of black people takes, takes place on every single continent. Um, so, so when we start talking about racism and anti-blackness, I, I tend to lean on the philosophies of Marcus Garvey. And I believe that all black people should be unified in this struggle. And secondly, we should fight for all oppressed people. And uh, recently, one of the reasons I reached out to you, of course, was that a group of Africans who were uh, from mostly from Ethiopia, but not all from Ethiopia, uh, migrants working in uh, Yemen have gotten caught up in the war that's taking place over there. Um, in a part of Yemen controlled by the Houthis, um, they were in a camp. And I think there were like four or five or 600 of them together in the camp. Mm -hmm. They were complaining about their circumstances, um, the situations that they were living in, the lack of food. And as they complained, the Houthis, which is this uh, rebel group, um, started firing on them and shooting them. What struck me was it didn't sound like anybody cared. I, I know that the Ethiopians went to the United Nations and got the Human Rights Watch to issue a report, which I'll read some parts of later, but it, it seemed like nobody cared. Do, is there a concern for the situation of Africans in, in situations like that? 
Well, absolutely. Um, I strongly contend that if this were a group of white people who were placed inside of a hangar and there were missiles and projectiles fired into that building and 44 people would die and people who were trying to escape had to step on dead bodies, this would be a matter of international concern. But the racism in the media and on the world stage uh, renders this a non-issue. And one of the reasons why I took this interview was to come out and say, hey, where is the national attention? I, there's a strong Yemeni population here in New York City. I work with the Yemeni Merchants Association. So I have friends who are Yemeni and I've asked some, you know, who are the Houthi and, and do you believe in them? And I've received information, feedback from both perspectives. I, I've re received feedback that was pro-Yemeni government, and I received feedback that was pro-Houthi. What you really need to understand is, I don't have a bone in this fight, Right. okay? There are far more people who, are, who know the history of this conflict, who know the country, that can give you a better evaluation on the politics of it. What I care about is innocent black people who are seeking asylum, innocent black people who are simply looking for work being murdered, being murdered because they asked for better treatment. That's what I have a problem with. And I think that's what the world should have a problem with. Yeah, I, I think your point is, is, is really important. It really isn't about the politics on either side as much as it is people were killed and you know, given that there is a raised and heightened awareness of the, you know, the discrimination and the violence against blacks, against Africans, uh, not just in the U.S., but around the world, you would have thought, you know, that, hey, you're, as you point out, if that had been 44 white people in a foreign country and had they been killed, I'm going to say that I bet that would have been uh, because of the uproar from different organizations, a major decline in every newspaper across the country. This wasn't. It was like eh, another conflict aboard, overboard, overseas. Who cares? Yeah, and, I, and, and that's extremely problematic for me because I, I researched it. And I didn't see a headline from CNN. I didn't see a headline from MSNBC, nor did I see a headline for, for from Fox News. And that's just a racism in the media. Um, I, I, I weighed in on something, a similar situation in Tigray, the northernmost region of Ethiopia. And it was like, I don't care about your politics. Um, I understand. I, let me rephrase that. That's I right. care about what's going on, but I care mostly about innocent black people being killed. And we had to work with um, groups of, of Ethiopian activists to raise awareness about this. We, um, we, 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 we suffered scrutiny. There were threats sent our way, telling us to mind our business saying that we were siding with the wrong people and what they didn't understand is we were siding with the victims, the innocents, the people who were being murdered. And that's the same way I feel about the people who were who the Yemeni, uh, uh, the, the people who were murdered in Yemen. Um, when I think about people in a small space and being attacked with military grade weapons and their inability to fight back and the struggle to survive that breaks my heart. That should break anyone's heart. And it's time that Black Lives Matter on the world stage, it's time that, that, that the world cared if we didn't go out and protest and make noise and shut down highways and, and, and take over government buildings. The world, should mat the world should care without us going to these extremes because some countries, some places are not organized. Some people don't have the freedom of speech that we are blessed with in America. I am highly critical of America, but I do appreciate the rights that we are allowed to exercise. Well, are you, and of course I had mentioned to you before the interview that, you know, we reached out to a lot of groups and, you know, I, I kind of figured most of the mainstream groups wouldn't respond to this. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I thought, you know, African, Black American groups might respond. 
I, we reached, even in the UK, we reached out to Black Lives Matter. And I'm not singling out Black Lives Matter, but they are the kind of the focus, the voice of African Americans mm-hmm. uh, today. But nobody would respond. What, why do you think that is? I mean, why, did, why do you think I kept getting uh, uh, emails from people saying, nah, we have no comment on that? It would, well, it like it's, it's a tough thing. situation to be in because of the politics. Um, you have to understand that there's a lot of people in this world who seeks to who seek to manipulate this movement, right? When people call you and ask for help, they're not telling you the other side of the story, right? You know, because if 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 a perfect example is this the situation in Ethiopia. You know, if you speak to the people who are pro-Ethiopian government, they won't tell you the side of the Tigray region. And and if you're talking about the Tigray region, then you have TPLF supporters and, and then you have supporters of the people of Tigray. Those people uh, don't always give you the full story. It's easy to be led astray. It's right. easy to be manipulated. So it's easier for a group to say, you know, no comment, but I'm uh, 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 what some might call an international civil rights leader. And if they were generous, they'd call me a world leader on matters that pertain to black people because of the reach we have. And um, this is an issue that needs attention. This is something that cannot be ignored. ignored. This is something that I will not ignore. There are 44 people murdered and the news is not paying attention. And I have strong reason to believe that the reason that the news is not paying attention is because they are in fact black people. So it is my duty to fight for the freedom of black people across the world. So the bottom line is, yes, there's a, there's always going to be politics and everything. I don't think there'd be a topic we couldn't find politics in, but when it does come to lives of people, that should be elevated above the politics. It shouldn't be a, it shouldn't be a political issue. You know, there's politics and everything, basically. Um, but this is, this is about people who were killed. And nobody seemed outraged over the fact that those people were dead, as opposed to getting involved in the politics. No, you know, I didn't ask the other chapters or the other groups, Hey, what do you think of the politics? I said, Hey, 44 people were killed. How does that, you know, make you feel? Mm-hmm. I was surprised by the answer. Yeah, uh, that's that's uh, that's what I, I have a problem. If if you pay attention to our style of activism, it's um it's it's a lot different than um, a lot of groups you'll encounter. We are far from politically correct. We say things that black people are thinking that they may not want to say. Um, Donald Trump has targeted me personally and and, and accused me of treason, of sedition, of insurrection. Um, Why? Because I said the things that you would hear on a street corner in the South Bronx, right? that you would hear uh, in Houston, Texas, or Atlanta, things that, 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 that politically correct black people think, but they won't say. So we are um, very, very, very uh, uh, confrontational in our activism. And we bring the truth from the um, communities, the, the unheard communities to the biggest platforms in the world. CNN, Fox News, you name it. We're going to say the things that need to be said. A lot of people were upset at my um, our co-founder, who is also my sister, because she said Joe Biden just hired, just selected a top cop to be um, his vice president in a time of Black Lives Matter. Everybody knows it's the truth, but that was something that she wasn't supposed to say. Our activism is focused on impact. We opened a school here in the Bronx in September where little black and brown children can go and receive a Montessori style education. It's geared and focused on them. Uh, Since COVID happened, we fed 12 
thousand people in three different states. When there was a deep freeze in Houston a few weeks ago, Houston, Texas, we went down there and fed people. We bought a storage container that's 40 foot wide that people are converting into an indoor farm to teach people of the community how to grow their own food. We focus on impact. In the last year, we've passed five laws and, and we've introduced one of the most radical uh, 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 bills or proposals for a law in New York City's history last week. Like, this is what we do. So um, we fight for Black people. And I've been to Australia, right? A David Dungay was a man who was killed by the police after screaming, I can't breathe 11 times just like Eric Garner did. And I and I stood on that platform in Australia and I, and I uplifted the voice of his family of the Black Aboriginal people. This is what we do. I've spoken to uh, Black people, civil rights groups in Paris, as well as in Thailand. Um, I am very much pro-Black and I'm going to speak out for Black people, no matter the cost. All right. Uh, Hawk Newson, my guest uh, from a uh, founding member of Black Lives Matter, Greater New York. Anything else you want to say about the organization uh, that you want me to highlight or explain at all? Well, we are launching an uh, organization. We're launching an organization called uh, Black Opportunities. As you can see, that's uh, the logo behind me. And that is focused on empowering Black people in our communities every day. We are building a curriculum where we will teach people about their true history, dating back to Africa when they were kings and queens who discovered uh, 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 arithmetic, who discovered, who created the wheel. We're talking about law, government, and politics. I, myself, I hold a law degree. Uh, we're talking about uh, black economics and the power of spending money with other black people in your community. And we're also feeding people and teaching them about health. Now on the back side of that, we are teaching people about self self defense and, and, and um, conducting weapons trainings so that black people can know how to defend themselves. Um, I, I'm tired. I'm tired of marching. Right. For me, uh, what we do is Black Lives Matter is we are, are always building boats to get across these troubled waters. Right now, I'm building a bridge, right? I'm building something that is permanent mm -hmm. that will help empower our people all the time. And your website um, is blacklivesmattergreaterny.com? Or yes. You have, you have another website you want? And we also have another website that is blackopportunities.com. And there you can see our legislative platform and agenda. We rolled that out uh, several days after we returned from the riots in Minnesota. And uh, if you look at that list, it's, it's very, very much all inclusive. And five of those laws have been passed into legislation here in New York City, uh, New York State since that date, June 7th. Um, you want to talk about impact? Then you show me another group who's passed five laws in the last year.